we've spent a fair amount of time now talking about the derivative, and we're going to spend more time talking about the derivative. But in this section, we're going to spend some time talking about the second derivative. And before we do that, let's have a quick round up. If we're interested in a function, we can use the derivative to study it. But what pieces of information is the derivative giving us? I mean, it's obviously giving us the rates of change, but just kind of as general statements. The first derivative tells us when a function thing where I say a word and then just start writing it. The derivative can tell us when a function is increasing or decreasing um, based on the sign of the derivative. If the derivative is positive, the function is increasing. If the derivative is negative, the function is decreasing. And the derivative tells us where the extrema are using the first derivative test. Or, if we are specifically interested in absolute extrema on closed intervals, there is a different technique we follow. But either way, we're using the first derivative to investigate to the extrema. Having said that, you can have two functions that share these properties and nevertheless don't look anything alike. I mean, if we go to Firefox, <coughs> no, never, Firefox, the smos.com, and we share this so it shows up in the recording f of x equals e to the x and g of x equals the natural logarithm of x. These functions have the same first derivative properties. So both these functions are always increasing. Their first derivatives are always positive. Neither of these functions has any local extrema. They, are they do not have critical values. So, sort of from a first derivative point of view, these functions are the same, but if we are looking at the graphs, these graphs obviously look very different. Um, this logarithm is just slowly growing. This exponential function is growing extremely quickly. So what's the difference 
between these graphs? <coughs> we can't answer that really using the derivative. The answer to this question can be found in the second derivative, however, and just as a 10-second reminder, the second derivative of f is the derivative of the derivative. And our notation for the second derivative using the Grange notation is that. And we've seen so far one application of the second derivative when we were investigating motion. Um, if s of x is a position function, the second derivative is the acceleration. So, the second derivative controls something called the concavity of the function. Basically, if we're just looking at continuous curves and we do not look at straight lines, straight lines kind of break this, there are basically four things a function could be doing. If a function is increasing, it could look a bit like that, or it could look like that. These are two increasing graphs, reading from left to right. If a function is decreasing, it could look basically like that, or it could look basically like that. And of course, just like a function can sometimes be increasing and sometimes be decreasing, we can have a function made up of multiple pieces from that white. Board. So, for example, if we have a bit of the sine function, well, this sine function starts out looking like this. that piece there. Then it starts looking like that. That piece there. Then it starts looking like this, Let's see, this piece here, then it looks like this, this piece here. And then that pattern just starts to repeat itself. So I'm certainly not saying that every function only 
looks like this. But I am saying that every function is basically made up of pieces that look like that. As another example, we could look at a quadratic function. This quadratic function initially is looking like that. Then the quadratic function takes on a different shape. It starts looking like that. So, um, these sort of little graphical pieces can be thought of as the building blocks that make up more complicated functions. And we can now ask, what's mathematically, what's the difference between these functions? We can kind of use the first derivative to group these four pieces into two. There are two pieces where the function is increasing, and therefore the derivative is positive. And there are two pieces where the function is decreasing, and therefore the derivative is negative. What the second derivative is going to do is going to dis be to distinguish between the pieces in these categories. So the second derivative is going to let us distinguish between those graphs and the second derivative is going to let us distinguish between these graphs. And there's a word for this. And the word we are looking for is concavity. which, I mean, concave is a standard English word, concave or convex. Um, a graph, or a, I mean, if we're looking at the component pieces that make up a graph, I should say, a graph can be con cave up or it can be concave down. A concave up piece of the graph looks like that if the graph is increasing, it looks like that if the graph is decreasing. A concave down piece of the graph looks like that if the graph is increasing, it looks like that if the graph is decreasing. So a graph can be increasing or decreasing. 
A graph can be concave up or concave down. That gives us four possible cases, increasing concave up, increasing concave down, decreasing concave up, decreasing concave down. And those four pieces, let me get rid of this detritus, those four combinations give you these four graphs. So this is decreasing, concave up. This is decreasing, concave down. This is increasing, concave up. This is increasing, concave down. I, as a memory aid, when I was first learning this, I thought of the graph as, as a bow, a bow can be upright or a bow can be upside down. And an upright bowl is made of two concave up pieces. There is a concave up decreasing piece and a concave up decreasing piece. And if a bowl is upside down, it's once again made of two pieces. There's a concave down, um, decreasing piece. And there's a concave down, increasing piece. So, that's, I mean, I said when I first learned it, but honestly, to this day, that's how I've always uh, kept, these, uh, kept these graphs straight in my mind. So, I've said that, that concavity is controlled by the second derivative, what I haven't done, of course, is write on the board how that control occurs. A graph is concave up when the second derivative is positive. And it's concave down when the second derivative is negative. So just like increasing or decreasing is controlled by the sign of the first derivative, concave up concave down is controlled by the sign of the second derivative. Let's go back to this piece, to this picture. So for this part of the sign, it's increasing and it's concave up. So the first derivative must be positive. The second derivative 
must also be positive. Then it switches concavity. It's still increasing, but it's concave down. So the first derivative must still be positive, but the second derivative is now negative. Then it switches. It's always been kind of funny to me that concavity has a name, but the property of being increasing or decreasing doesn't. So I can't, um, but then it switches increasing, decreasing. It switches from being increasing to being decreasing. It doesn't switch concavity. It's still concave down. So now the first derivative is negative, and the second derivative is negative. <coughs> Finally, this last piece is decreasing and concave up. So the first derivative is still negative, but the second derivative has changed sign. The second derivative is positive. Any questions so far? Then, time for a definition. When a graph changes from increasing to decreasing, or from decreasing to increasing, that point has a name. That's a local extrema. Similarly, when a graph changes from concave up, to concave down, or from concave down to concave up, that point has a name, an inflection point. Is a point where the graph changes concavity. So we go from concave up to concave down there on this sine curve. And we change from being concave up, sorry, concave down to concave up there. I'm trying, I feel like I might have, uh, might have flipped those around from concave up to concave down, then from concave down to concave up. These points where concavity 
changes are the infection points. Unlike, unlike local extrema, the, the vagaries of history have not resulted in infection points having two different names. That is to say, if you have a local extrema, you can classify it. It's either a local minimum or a local maximum. An infection point is just called an infection point. So you'll notice that one of these infection points, we go from concave up to concave down. At the other infection point, we go from concave down to concave up. Even though these infection points are different in that way, we call them both infection points. So we now have a few things that we need to do. We could do them in prob the any order. We need to motivate this material a little better is maybe the first thing, um, or the second thing, let's say. I mean, these infection points are definitely giving us information about a graph, but compared to the local extrema, which had very concrete meanings, this is a maximum, this is a minimum, it's a little harder to parse what it means to have an infection point. But the reason I changed my mind just then and said that maybe that's the second thing we should do is that there's a very concrete mathematical question that we should probably answer first. And that concrete mathematical question is, if we have a function, how do we find its infection point? And I don't know if this is good news or bad news. The, um, the news is that we find infection points like we find local extrema. except using the second derivative. So good news part of that first, we're not learning any radically new processes. I mean, infection points are found by first finding the points where the second derivative is zero. Create a sign chart. Mark those points off. Then determine the sign of the second derivative in those intervals. 
And if the second derivative changes sign, it's an infection point. And if the second derivative doesn't change sign, it isn't. And let me let me adjust that slightly. As with critical values, we also have these candidates where the second derivative does not exist, maybe. So based on this sign chart, we have an infection point there. So that's the good news, I guess. We're not learning any radically new processes. The bad news is that sometimes that causes students' confusion, I guess. I mean, students remember that they have to construct a sign chart, but are they looking at the original function or the first derivative or the second derivative? And sometimes I see students construct sign charts using, using the wrong function. Um, the other piece of bad news is that most functions get worse as you start taking their derivative. So the second derivative is probably going to be worse than the first derivative. And when I say worst, I mean, this <laughs> sounds like a weird value judgment. But what I mean is that you have to set something equal to zero. You have to solve an equation. And the more complicated the function is, the harder it is to set equal to zero. So you can run into problems like that. Let's attempt an example. Let's see. Let's look at this function. 1 over x plus the natural logarithm of x. <coughs> Since I just came up with this example five seconds ago, I don't know how uh, easy or how difficult the algebra is going to be, but we are going to attempt it. And if we fail, well, we illustrated something we just said, but, but I hope that we don't fail. And I don't think we will. So 1 over x plus the natural log of x. Let's state our goal. Find. And I'm going to say classify in fact points. And by classify, we might not have different phrases for infection points, like concave up sorry, like local maximum or local minimum, but we can still say at this infection point we go from concave up to concave down, or we can still say at this infection point we go from concave down to concave up. So we can still sort of classify them even though we don't have special terms. For the purposes of finding 
this derivative. Let's remember that 1 over x is x to the negative first. And actually, although, although I phrased this in terms of maybe we'll be able to do this, maybe we won't. I picked us a pretty merciful first example. Oh, what am I? Yeah, yeah, this is right. Um, I picked us a pretty merciful first example because the logarithm is a function that gets nicer when you take its derivative. There aren't a lot of those, but <coughs> 1 over x is definitely a nicer function than the natural log of x. So I made that typo, so let's just double check. The negative 1 came down, negative 1 turned to negative 2. The derivative of the natural log is 1 over x. And then I rewrote 1 over x as x to the negative first. All looks good to me, if it looks good to all of you. Then, so the negative 2 comes down. We get a positive 2 next to that negative sign. 2x to the negative third minus x to the negative second. So 2 over x cubed minus 1 over x squared. And potential infection points occur when this is set equal to zero or when this doesn't exist. Let's dismiss the or this doesn't exist thing right away. It doesn't exist at one value. x equals zero would give us a division by zero error. But this function isn't defined to the left of zero. There's no way that it can switch its concavity at zero if it isn't defined to the left of zero, so zero isn't a real candidate. The second derivative isn't defined there, but neither is the original function. And that leaves us with one way we could have infection points which is if the second derivative equals zero. So 2 over x cubed minus 1 over x squared equals and now let's test our algebraic metal. We probably want to get rid of those x squared x um, cubes in the denominator. We could multiply both sides of this equation. by x cubed. 
Wubidu. And what would that do? 2x cubed over x cubed minus x cubed over x squared equals zero. And then stuff cancels, right? x cubed over x cubed, that cancels x cubed over x squared partially cancels. We're left with x two minus x equals zero. X equals positive two. And I'm going to put a question mark there because um, this is not necessarily an infection point. This is a point where the second derivative equals zero. It's a candidate to be an infection point. But we need to actually verify that the second derivative really does change sign here. Let's carve out some space to work. Let's dot down that. I'm going to start erasing stuff. Does everybody have that work copied? So this was the second derivative. And we're using the second derivative to create a sign chart. And let me see, we need a value to the, uh, to the left of two. We should be a little careful about this. Let me actually go ahead and explicitly remind ourselves that we have a left-hand bound here. This function isn't defined when x is negative. And I'm reminding myself of that because otherwise you might say, oh, well, negative 5 is less than 2. But you shouldn't use negative 5. Negative 5 isn't in the domain of this function. Let's instead choose 1. If x is 1, then f double prime is 2 minus 1, which is 1. And f double prime is positive. Uh, something to the right of 2. Um, I think maybe x equals 10, just because x equals 10 gives me something I can do in my head, more or less. Um, this is definitely negative. 2 over 1 one thousandth is smaller than 1 one hundredth. This is point that we've never been great at going from even simple fractions to decimals. But this is something like 0 0.002 minus 0 0.01.
and something like negative point. Oh Lord, my complete inability to do mental arithmetic. That's uh, less harmful than you might think as far as being a math professor goes, but occasionally it comes home and bites me. We'll just plug this into our calculator. We do indeed get a negative number. Negative point zero zero eight. So, our infection point, infection points are points, right? It's right there in the name, so we'd better grab that by coordinate as well. Um, 1 over 2 plus the natural log of 2 1 1.193 And this is going from concave up. To concave down. Let me see. Concave up because it was positive to the left. Concave down because it's negative on the right. All right, then we have we will finish this section tomorrow as planned. I will see you then.